Hello everyone and welcome back to the Radical Show. I'm your host Radical XD and today we're going to look into Avatar The Last Airbender which came out in Netflix I want to say recently but honestly at this point it's probably been months so I'm a bit late to the party but you know it is what it is so as you know Avatar The Last Airbender got a live action TV show for the Netflix series you know and last time we had a live action adaptation of the Avatar it was not a very good moment for the franchise. Let's just say that movie is dead and buried. No one wants to talk about that film. We all know it's bad. Everyone who knows of this movie knows it's bad. To the actors themselves in that movie know it's bad. And honestly, it's not worth anyone's time. And it's definitely not worth talking about. So please excuse me, I don't know why, my throat is sore or something, um, my internet is a bit faulty today, but you know, that doesn't really matter with this voice recording, but anyways, we're we're here to talk about the Avatar The Last Airbender, so my quick thoughts on the Netflix series are that I liked it to some extent, now obviously... As an Avatar fan, and I didn't grow up with the series like most kids did in my generation, but I did watch the series many years later on Netflix, and I did fall in love with it, and it is one of my favorite cartoon shows of all time. So, obviously, comparing the cartoon versus the Netflix series, it isn't really a fair comparison because, one, the animated series had more of a lengthy run, and had more time to develop its characters. So I believe the first season might have been, you know, close to 20 episodes or something like that. And it's just like, in my opinion, the Netflix series for some reason, or, or Netflix shows for some reason, like to stick to eight episode formats. I don't know why, but when considering the Avatar The Last Airbender... I feel like you could have added an extra two episodes there. Like, even considering the length of these uh, episodes being like 40 minutes or something like that, I feel like adding an extra two might have helped the series. But what I was trying to go overall is that I did enjoy the TV series, the Netflix one. But in comparison with the animated show, obviously the animated show is going to have a better track record. It's... It's got good char- It's got great characters, good development, a lot of, a lot of narrative. I I don't know how to describe it. It's just we focus more on the characters and their friendships. Where the Netflix series, we're just kind of told that they're that they are friends. Like me personally, like I didn't buy that Katara and Sokka were Aang's greatest friends by the end of the Netflix series. Like, they hadn't nearly been through enough to signify that, oh, they are friends for life. Like, more like acquaintances, if that makes any sense. But that's not to say that it it wasn't all terrible, but basically... So, at the start of this uh, season, we get a we get a really intense flashback as to how... The Fire Nation came to, you know, destroy the, the the Air Nation. And honestly, this was the thing I was most excited for in terms of the live action. Is how they'll be able to display, you know, action, you know. Like, how are we going to see bending in live action form? And it doesn't disappoint. It, there's a lot of cool fighting scenes throughout this series. And I also like how, because this is live action, we're able to take more of a mature tone to it because like obviously in the original cartoon series you know it's the 100 year war but because it's a cartoon you kind of have to shy away from the death and reality of war where here in netflix they go all out like they got people burning alive it's pretty intense but overall i still i still like the netflix series uh i think the casting for the most part, is pre- is pretty decent. Um, I don't have any problems with Aang's casting at all. Uh, me and my brother really enjoyed the actor who played Sokka. I I personally think 
he's got the character or the personality of Sokka there. Like, to me, that makes sense. Like, like he, he does a good impression. I like him. Uh, Zuko, um, considering Zuko is my favorite character in the original series, I will always be biased towards the original voice actor. I, I think his name is Dante uh, Bosco, or Biasco. I, I, I could be butchering that name, but please forgive me. I, I have a terrible memory with with names for some reason. Like, real people names. When it comes to car- fictional characters, oh my god, I'm a fucking expert somehow. But when it comes to real people, I somehow forget. I don't know why. But Zuko is m- my favorite character in the animated series, so I was more excited to see Zuko's side here in Season 1. And honestly, I can understand some of the criticisms that he's been giving in this season. Because in the first book of Avatar, the first season, he's meant to be the main antagonist. Like, he's the one after the Avatar. He's the one who's chasing them to the ends of the Earth. Like, he's doing everything for his honor. And he's being... Like, he's extreme. He's an extremely selfish person. And he's not a good guy. And in this one... In the Netflix series, they really, really try to get us in the feels with Zuko. Like, they really make us want to like him from the start. And I don't I don't think that's a, that's a positive change. Like, again, one of the most important factors about Zuko is that he's a character of redemption. And before we can get to the redemption, it's you got to start him off as evil as he, as he can be. Like, he was... He was not a likable human being in the first book of Avatar you know, in terms of the cartoon. And that was the point, you know. He's he, the characters see him as a monster, as nothing as a as a villain, you know? Like he's the representation of the Fire Nation. But here they they really they don't really showcase much of his I guess his cool demeanor, like as a as a villain, you know what I mean? It's like he has a few scenes where he, you know, confronts the Avatar and his and his friends in the Netflix show, and he's very angry about it. But he never gives off the. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what I'm saying, but it's just like they really do get us to like him a lot more. Like the the scene with with him and Uncle Iroh, like the flashback with the funeral, uh, his interactions with his with with his dad before the whole Agni Kai thing and also the Fire, Fire Lord Oza is casting I think is beautiful uh, I, I really love the casting of Uncle Iroh Oza I think Z- Zuko does an alright job I, I'm i biased because of the original voice actor but I do I do think the Zuko do, does a good job I kind of wish that the scar was more I guess I don't know I guess bigger, I would say, because in in all honesty, it kind of looks like a little bruise, like like if someone punched him in the face, and he's supposed to, he's supposed to be kind of like Two Face, but you know it, it is what it is. Um, Katara, uh, I don't know. Uh, her casting's fine, but unfortunately, compared to the animated series, Katara and Netflix doesn't really get a whole lot to do. She's kind of just there. Like, she barely has anything to do. Like, she has something to do with, uh... Oh, man, what was the one kid's name? Oh, Jet. Yeah, like, they they include the Jet arc here almost barely. And for some reason, it, it just doesn't pay off as well as it does in the show. But because this is Netflix, they they really tried to force a lot of the the plot elements in the animated series into, like, a singular episode. Like, when they go to, um... Oh, what was the Earth Kingdom? When they go to King Bumi's Earth Kingdom, like, that's an entire episode in in the animated series. Yeah, and in this one, they they put King Bumi in there, then they have Jet in there, and they have, the like, the, uh... the engineer guy there. They, They just put it all under one episode. And I guess it could work for Netflix, but, like... I don't know. I prefer them as singular stories within the animated series. But... <clears throat> Where was I going with this? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Again. But that's alright. Uh, I also did not like how... um They did the Cave of Secret Lovers. 
because in the in the Netflix series they obviously you know hinted at like 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 you know sibling love like it's just innocent love between siblings right and it's just like this is such a pivotal moment for like Aang and Katara in the series and it's like to do that without Aang just doesn't make any sense to me I do like what they did with Monk Gyatso and Aang in the series Netflix I mean they definitely show more of their I guess relationship or bond whereas in the animated series it kind of glosses over it so I really like seeing the inclusion of him the spirit world is was very interesting in the Netflix series. I, I don't really have that problem with the changes they did, but now one of the changes I really did not like was um during the I don't even know which episode it was, but the one where Zuko uh, also this this is spoilers, obviously, if you're listening to this. But when Zuko went to go save Aang, you know, like the whole scene where he go, you know, he wears the blue spirit mask and he goes to save Aang. All of it is such a perfect recreation of what happened in the original series, and I fucking loved every second of it. But it was up until the moment where they get away, and Zuko's unmasked, that they kind of they ruined it for me, because it's like for in the original series. You know, Aang goes off about talking about an old friend he used to know who was in the Fire Nation and contemplating on whether or not him and Zuko could have been friends if they knew each other back then. And in the series, you know, in, in the original series, Zuko's, you know, he sits there and he listens, but he doesn't utter a word and immediately just attacks Aang, which makes sense for Zuko's character at the time. And I was really looking forward to them doing that. And they do exactly that. But not before having a tender moment between the two of them. Like, they have an actual conversation where they tell jokes with one another to the point where Zuko even chuckles. I, I He didn't laugh, but he did smile and chuckle at, at Aang as if they were friends. But then it's like, why? They're not meant to have a conversation in this in this scene. And them speaking to one another, it just... It removes all the tension of Zuko being like the antagonist. Like right now he's basically just his friend. And it's just... To me it doesn't work as well. Another thing I also don't like how they didn't uh, introduce it. Was at the end where the battle of the Southern Water Tribe and the Fire Nation. In the original series Zuko was supposed to actually capture Aang. And be on his way out of the, the North Pole. But then him being stranded because he didn't have a plan. And he, he has this great monologue that he goes to Aang. Which to me is like a perfect like I guess symbolic or, or comparison like they did before. You know before Aang was the one talking to Zuko. And now Zuko's the one talking to Aang. And I really love that connection between the two of them in the original series. But in this one they, they, they don't even do it. They net that, that scene which proves pivotal in book two in a specific conversation with Uncle Iroh and it's they just don't have it here and I don't understand why but obviously I understand Netflix is trying to do their own thing which I can respect because honestly what is what is the point of making an adaptation if you're not gonna you know change a few things you know or or wait wait did I say that right I don't know it's like if you do an adaptation, you, you're you clearly going to make some changes. Like, I would say the only exception to this is, like, maybe, like, with manga and anime. With with manga and anime, anime tends, most of the time, tends to stick to, like, the manga source material. Which I do like, as, like, most of the stuff that the anime gets wrong can be blamed on the manga. But I, I don't know. But yeah, I did like the Netflix series. However, I am afraid... As to what else they could change. Like a lot did change within book one of water. But it wasn't enough for me to be like yeah I don't want to watch the rest of it. If that makes any sense. Because I am aware that the original creators of Avatar. Were involved with the Netflix series. But then left for creative differences. And I'm wondering as to what those differences would be. Like, what would what are the changes that are so bad 
that the original creator said, nah, fuck this. Like, that's what I'm worried about. And it's like, I don't, like, I know book two and book three have been confirmed for Netflix, so those will come out in the future. But I want to see how they turn out. I've heard rumors that maybe Toph won't be blind so they don't offend blind people, which to me sounds stupid as fuck. It's essential to her character, so I hope they don't do that, but we'll see. Um, The casting of Azula in the series is... I, w- I would still need to see more from the actress. She, I haven't bought the, the whole Azula personality. Again, I'm being biased towards my, you know love for the original voice actress for, for Azula. Because, like, she, to me, Azula has a pretty iconic voice. And I'm not going to replicate it, obviously, but, you know, her voice is pretty pretty good. But, yeah, um, the Netflix series, it changes a lot. And, honestly, if you really hate it that much, you could just rewatch the animated series. The animated series is so fucking good. And I do want to talk about it sometime. But I kind of want to rewatch it again so I can, you know, get back in the spirit of it and, you know, have my mind freshly, you know, be refreshed of the Avatar. But yeah, the, that's my that's my review of the Netflix series. Uh, I probably didn't dive into it as much as I did with Star Wars. I, I'm I'm so sorry about that. But I'm mostly more passionate towards things I hate than stuff I actually like for some reason. I don't know why, but, you know, I get more intense with, like, criticism but here with the Avatar, there wasn't much that I didn't like, if that makes sense. But, you know, I am I am still curious about what they'll do in the future. I just hope that they don't do anything too stupid. Like, if they ship Zuko with Katara, then I'll be like, yeah, this, this is garbage, you know. But for the moment, I am I am curious to see where Netflix will go with this series. But yes, um... We will be keeping this episode short, and I very much appreciate you listening in to a new episode of The Radical Show. Um, Again, the goal is to keep these minutes at like 15 to 20 minutes, because, you know, one can only listen to a long podcast and pay attention at the same time, if that makes sense, but I've been saying that a lot, but I'm sorry. Anyways, for next time... I'm considering what to go into this time because there is a lot of stuff. I I do want to get go into more about Star Wars and stuff like that. But honestly, let, I like sticking to Avatar. So yeah, we no for next episode, I will dive into my opinions on The Legend of Korra. It is really fresh in my memory as I've seen it maybe like a month ago. And I remember thoroughly enjoying this series. So I will dedicate an entire episode on my thoughts on The Legend of Korra. And I honestly think it's worth it. So thank you for listening in to today's episode. And I hope you all have a blessed day. I'll see you next time. Radical XD, signing off.